Hey guys, today's video is going to be on a couple of new additions, plus a few updates on some others. Then over the next month or so, fingers crossed, I'm going to try and do an update on everything I have, so I've got a record to look back on on how they've done. First up, my newest addition is Campanotus festinus. I've named her Biggie Smalls and I'm feeding her during the founding stage just to help her along. Feeding them huge larvae must take its toll. I'll be keeping her in the test tube till her first workers arrive. She is a really pretty queen, but the most impressive thing about her is her sheer size. She is massive. This is Biggie in the middle of a Mesobarba queen and a small Lassius colony. Biggie next to a Pogo Mermex queen. Biggie next to a couple of winged messes. Biggie next to some little tiny dots, I mean flavus. Biggie next to a mealworm. And lastly, Biggie making my Lignoperda queen look small. I'm really excited to see her workers arrive and I'll keep you all updated. Next up, my new Polyrachus dive colony. I'm keeping them in a large Antantix outworld and hoping they create some awesome nest structures. I've only had them a couple of weeks. I've given them sand as substrate, some twigs and some building materials and an extra tube. They have started building in the back corner and weave the opening of their test tube closed. All of the poplar wood was placed in the middle of the outworld so they've moved a fair bit so far. The workers are so golden, especially on their gasters. They're a rich black on the body and the head unless you shine a light on them and then you'll see hints of gold all over them. I won't get to see them in this test tube for much longer as you can see they are already using the larvae to weave all the walls. The polyrachus dives, as with all weavers, eat a lot. The brood take a lot of food, especially protein, to be able to weave so much. I do think that it's incredible that they use their babies like glue sticks to weave their tubes and to also weave together all the poplar wood. Hopefully they build all over the twigs eventually, time will tell. One thing about this species to look out for is dead workers. You have to remove them from small setups. If not, the workers will walk around carrying the dead for ages, basically till the worker itself dies from exhaustion. Next up, Lassius Flavus. These have got to be the cutest natives ever. I have always adored Flavus. I have two colonies of these. Today we are looking at the two queen colony. I'm keeping them in an Antantix pop F. Three tubes attached, the original tube that they're not moving from, a nice clean tube in the middle, and I put an empty tube on the end and I put a tiny bit of their trash in and now they see it as their trash area, which is going to make cleaning them super easy. They are a very shy species, especially in low numbers, but in a few months we should get some decent swarms over food with them. Next to get an update is the Osophila. These green weavers are so much fun to keep. They are always doing something or creating something. They're doing really well in their Weaver 6. I really tried to get some footage of the queen, but the workers are being super protective of her. The green blob is the queen. They always have a decent amount of brood. They eat a lot. Sugar snaps and protein. They load up on sugar snaps first, likely giving them the energy to drag the feeder insects up to the test tube.
They definitely live up to their name being weavers. They weave the openings of the test tubes, plus now they are weaving the test tubes to the Weaver 6. They poop a lot. All the clumps in the sand are poop. They are turning the sand into their own kitty litter. Next up, the leaf cutters. The fungus had a big die off over winter. It's starting to pick up again now though. They are piling all of the waste, which looks like soil, to the roof of the outworld. And they have workers in it, so it's a pain to clean out. They have also decided to scrap all the green bits in the dried petals so it's a right mess in the outworld now. They have survived the winter on frozen peas, broccoli and occasionally some privet when it's had a few warmer days. Dandelion and bramble will be everywhere soon so they will explode again. I didn't see much brood over winter, but starting to see more now. Plan for the LC this year is to let them travel for food. Maybe ropes, tubing, large outworld. Watch this space. And lastly for this video, the Tetrapanera. I know I did my last videos on these ladies, but I just freaking love them. New workers are emerging. Oh, so bloody cool. The queen is an absolute laying machine. So much brood. Yes, they are using the pop F wrong and living in the art world, but I don't care. I'm just letting them do their things. They can put what they want, where they want. I'm not messing with these aggressive ladies. There's a mega pile of eggs in the tube. Population is growing by the minute. I'll be adding a large Antantix outworld and I'm going to put some wooden things in it because they're great at chewing wood. But they're just awesome. I'm so glad I got them. And I know I go on about the Tetrapanera a lot, but even their babies are impressive. I love seeing their life cycle laid out like this. Next video, I'll probably pick another five colonies or so to do an update on. That's all for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, bye.